Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I would like to share top five applications for your iPhone for 2017. This is the first part of the top five apps for your iPhone series, so I will be making more videos very soon. Make sure you subscribe and stay tuned and check the description for links to the other top five app videos. Now, some of these apps are going to be free and some of them are going to be paid and I will specify which one is which. Anyway, let's dive in and discover some fantastic apps that you can grab for your iPhone to enhance your experience. All right, so the first app I wanna talk about is called the Quotes Creator. And uh, basically, let's just launch this app and demonstrate what you can do. So you can actually create very nice looking quotes using this application. If you look in the middle, it says double tap to write. So let's just do that. Let's double tap and it brings up a window into which you can dump a quote. So let me write something down really quickly. So once you dump a quote into that window, you click the check mark, and as you can see, now you can see that text in the background. Now here's the magic. So when you can actually uh, scroll around and pick any one of these custom backgrounds and custom texts, and the moment you tap on one, it's gonna change that entire quote and the background into something really nice to look at. So if I tap this, that's what happens. If I go over, if I tap this, that's what you get. And you can click this window over here and that allows you to just scroll through all these things and let's just pick this one right over here. And as you can see, that looks fantastic. And of course, once you're done creating your quote, you can uh, share this immediately. You tap this button right here. And from here, you can send it to your camera roll, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want. So that's a very good option that you can immediately share the custom quote. And of course, this one is free to download, but there are some in-app purchases you can perform. Uh, you basically tap on the Pro over here and that allows you to upgrade to Pro. And uh, without the Pro, obviously you're gonna get a watermark at the bottom, but with the Pro, the watermark disappears and you get some extra options. And if you look at the bottom here, there's a lot of things you can do if you so desire. I'm not gonna go into that. Just go and download the application, it's free, and then just take a look at it, play with it, and if you like it, you can upgrade to the Pro. All right, so let's just tap two more things over here just to give you an idea, a sensation of what to expect, and let's move on to the next application. All right, so the next application is a productivity tool. It's called To Do. So this basically is a list creator and a task generator, and it looks beautiful. So basically the apps I like to show you guys are the apps that are designed nice, easy to use, and also some of them are very feature rich, such as the To Do application. So again, basically if you're looking to create lists, this is the app to download. Now it's gonna be free to download, but there's gonna be some in-app purchases. So as you can see, when I press this button, it shows me all the to-do lists that I have right now. And that's the one that I actually completed today, the test list. And if you want to add a list, you simply click plus. And from here, you can say, uh, buy a new uh, desk, all right? And then you can either make this into a check mark Okay, so if I tap this over here, you can make it into a check mark, you can make it into a project, or you can make it into a, a task. So you can go ahead and play with these things once you download the application. And of course, you can add notes to each task you create if you want to do some details, add some details, I mean. And of course, you can add tags, which are very useful these days. If you have a large list, it is easy to navigate using tags. And then you pick a date. So let's say you want to do this on Wednesday. You tap on pick, the calendar comes right up. Let's just say you're gonna do it next month, actually. So next month on February, I'm gonna do this, tap on one. Uh, click done and then it allows you to pick a time so let's pick a time the default time at the bottom here is 6 p.m. now if you click that that's what's going to be selected and this is an active alert gives you a quick summary you click save and it shows up in your to-do list now of course you can actually choose things like uh, what's happening today you can have some of the uh, tasks that you create you can add a star mark next to it so they're going to show up in the start area and then you have things that are scheduled nothing is scheduled right now and these are the ones that are done and if you go over here you can separate work and home so you can have a separate list for your home a separate list for your work and over here you have special smart lists okay you can create new lists that are customized for a specific project. So this one is just a generic one. This is the next three days. This comes with the app. But if you click plus over here, 
whoop, not over here, I'm sorry. If you click plus over here, you can in fact create a new list. So this could be a grocery list and in the grocery list, you can break it down by what kind of different groceries you want to buy. You know, maybe you buy bread on Mondays, maybe you buy ingredients for a special food on Wednesdays. So you can create a new list just for groceries. And let me just show you what it looks like. So grocery right here. Oops, let's pick this one. Uh, let's give it a color, brown. And the group can stay in the smart lists and then exclude from any of these, you can exclude them. Uh, click add and your groceries list is going to show up here. So when you click plus, it's going to go into that list. Okay. And you can see it up over here. So you can create custom lists for custom projects, custom events, custom tasks. And of course, as I said, this is free to get, but then you can upgrade to a pro with some more features. Again, just go get it and then you can see the things you can do. But as you can see, when you click the options, you have all these options at the bottom. It's a really, really nice little, um, little application. Of course, if you go at the bottom here, you in fact have a calendar view that you can access. Uh, and anything that's highlighted means you have something going on that day. All right, so let's get out and move on to the next application. All right, so the next application, again, is a productivity tool. It's called Calendars 5. Now, basically, if you don't like the basic calendar that you have on your iPhone, or if you're looking for a new calendar, this is the one to check out. It's not going to be free. Right now, it is $6.99. I got this on sale for a couple bucks. but uh, So you could either be on the lookout for a sale, or you can just buy it if you like it. So let me launch this and show you what it looks like. Okay, so that's the monthly view. And of course, you can tap this icon here. At the bottom, you can switch between months. I can go to February. I can go to March. That's a nice touch over there. I can tap this icon over here, and I can do a week view, which looks nice too. I can do a daily view. As you can see, nothing is going on today. Or I can look at, at a list view. That's going to give me a list of everything that is upcoming on my calendar. And of course, I can scroll down or use the buttons at the bottom. All right, let's tap this one more time and go to tasks. Now, tasks are separate than calendar entries. Tasks are kind of check marks. Let me create one and you can see exactly what I mean. So let's add a new task. Uh, let's say that I want to, again, buy a desk. All righty. And then I click done. And then it's going to ask me. I can tap this icon here. That's uh, the due date of this project. So let's say I want to buy the desk by... 25th. All right, click done. Then I click this and that's going to allow me to add a reminder. So add a reminder on the 24th before I actually, uh, before the due date. So click done. All right. And then click this. Is this a recurring event? No, it's not. So I can go back. It recurs never. And I can also add details. So what kind of desks may I be looking for? I can tap some details and then you click done and you click save. Okay, and that becomes a new task. Now, this is not a calendar entry. It is a task you have to complete. So if I go back out here to the um, monthly view, and if I go to January and go to 25th, you'll see that there's a task over there that says buy a desk. On the day that I'm done, I can click the check mark and it's over. Alrighty. But if you're going to be adding a calendar entry, you simply click this plus icon over here. And then from here, you can type in in human language, okay? So meet the, let's click, don't allow for now. Click OK. Let's go back. Let's click plus again. So meet the doctor next Tuesday. Okay, so the... Uh, app knows when you type in next Tuesday, you're talking about next Tuesday. And from here, you can pick that option. And then from there, is this an all day event? No, it's not. And then you can pick a time. There's some preset times here, or you can pick it from here. So it's going to be in the morning, 10 a.m. And then you click done. And then you can, as usual, pick a calendar to add it into. You can create an alert. Uh, you can create a location. I can tap this and I can tell the uh, application where the doctor is. We're not going to do that right now. And of, of course, you can turn this into a repeat event, recurring event. Uh, you can add other people, invite them, and of course, you can add some details. Okay, so what kind of doctor 
what kind of appointment you can add that into the details. So again, I don't want to go in and give you a full demonstration of everything you can do here, but basically it is just a replacement calendar. It's going to be a long-term product. You know, it works on the iPhone, on the iPad. It always gets updates. So it's been around for a while. So I don't think you should be worried about paying it. If you're looking for a good calendar application, this is the one you want. And of course, it can sync to any of your Gmail calendars or any other calendars. All right, so let's move on to the next application. The next application I want to talk about is the Calculator Plus application. So basically, obviously, your iPhone comes with a very basic calculator. If you want something beyond that, you can get Calculator Plus. Now, again, this guy is free, but what I like about this thing is it is modularly upgradable. So you can get the Calculator Plus application, you launch it, and it looks fantastic right off the bat. You know, you can 95 plus 95 equals, and then you can clear it by swiping over or tapping the button and you can access secondary functions, which are some trigonometric functions over here and you know, and these things right over here. And uh, what you can do is, as a base calculator, it looks gorgeous. It has themes, so you can get themes. You can do a black and white theme, or you can purchase more themes. But if you click switch over here, it allows you to purchase and unlock handwriting calculators, so you can actually use your handwriting to write the calculator, uh, which is, if you tap this, it's going to say unlock everything for $9 or just a student pack or just something that you want specifically, okay? But if you go back over here, as you can see, you have polynomials, you have linear uh, calculator, you have a graphing calculator, you have a converting application, and you also have a currency converter. On top of that, you can go inside and you can access themes. So if you unlock everything, you can basically buy any one of these themes and uh, create a custom calculator uh, that meets your aesthetic needs. So anyway, again, very basic. This is something you can download right now, so go grab it. And um, if, you, if you like it, you can use it as a base calculator. If you don't like it, you can delete it. And if you actually want other functions, you can purchase them one by one. Not a bad setup at all. And as you can see, you can also do things like this with this calculator, nine, five, okay? All right, so that could be very useful for mathematics. Let's move on to the next application, the final application for today for the part one of this video. All right, guys, so the final application is a camera application. Now, this is a simple yet powerful camera application. When you launch it, it looks very simple on the surface. And of course, those are my favorite kind of applications, the ones that are simple, but they are actually powerful under the hood. Now, the reason this guy is powerful is because it allows you to access manual controls for your camera on your iPhone. Now, as you know, the built-in iPhone application, the camera application does not give you access to manual control. Now, if you are a professional photographer or even if you're an enthusiast in photos, you probably know about ISO, shutter speed, and all that nice stuff. Now, this camera, this camera application, Obscura, gives you access to the manual controls right over here. Okay, so everything you need to do is right here for manual controls. If you want to go all automatic, all you do is press and hold, uh, for example, exposure here, and it just goes out to, I'm sorry, just press and hold, and boom, it's automatic. So right now, anybody can take a photo, and it's just going to work, okay? Now, if you want to actually do manual controls, over here on the top are the ISO controls. At the bottom is the shutter speed. So when I change this, when I press minus, that allows me to change the ISO, okay? As you can see, you can even see the value up here, and over here, it allows me to change the shutter speed. Okay, so I can reduce or increase the shutter speed and the new values reflect underneath uh, in the middle right over here. And of course, when you're ready, you simply uh, click plus and that takes a photo. On top of that, you have access to focus. You can manually focus if you desire. You press and hold the focus button, a little dial comes up and you can simply change the focus. Okay, so as you can see, I'm going out of focus I'm going in focus, and if I want auto focus, I can remain right here, and then I can take a picture. So as you can see, you can control the ISO, uh, you can control the shutter speed, you can manually focus, or you can simply tap and hold on this guy here, and everything goes back to automatic, okay? And again, if you tap and hold this guy, a dial does come up that allows you to adjust the exposure automatically as well, okay? So if that looks better, you can take that. If that looks better, you can take that. Let's keep it over here and that's where it's locked into. 
Okay, so obviously that's not everything. If you swipe over, you get access to a bunch of other things. You can switch the camera to the front camera, and uh, you can. what you can do is you can uh, access the optical zoom on the iPhone 7 Plus. As you know, iPhone 7 Plus has two cameras, and if you have that phone, this allows you to uh, enable the optical zoom. On top of everything, if you want to actually save pictures in the RAW format, RAW enables you to save the photo in RAW format, and then you can export or import that into another device, uh, such as a PC or a Mac, and you can edit it in some good amount of detail, okay? Much more than you can edit a regular photo. So again, if you tap this, you can save the photo in the RAW format. But let me uh, show you something more simple, something more fun. If you tap this, you can access the filters. And all you have to do is swipe on the screen, and it's gonna switch between different potential filters. And these are all nice looking filters, by the way. And uh, it tells you the name of the filter on the top here as you swipe over, so you can get a live preview. And when you're ready, you simply take a picture. On top of that, if you swipe over from the bottom here, you can look at all the filters, a little preview of what it looks like, and a little description, okay? And then you go back out there and you can switch between the filters. And then if you swipe over one more time, you can access the settings. If you go down, as you can see, you can save in RAW plus JPEG. Uh, you can enable that option if you want. You can enable filters, uh, focus peaking, and you can use the front camera as a mirror and all these nice things. Okay, so again, I'm not going to go into too much details. If you have been looking for a different camera application that is a little bit more intuitive, more pretty, you can use this guy. If you swipe over here, you can also change the grid. Okay, what I like here is you have a grid, a square grid that actually uh, emulates Instagram. So if you're an Instagram guy or a girl, you can use this square grid to take Instagram pictures. Of course, you can control the flash, you have the timer, you can add a level, and you can control the white balance from here. Okay, so these are the options on this camera. Again, very simple looking, but quite powerful. It gives you the raw mode. It allows you to control the exposure, the ISO, the shutter speed, the focus, all manually if you so desire. All right, so that was the last application for this video. Well, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to Saki Tech and give this video a thumbs up. Also, follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Saki Tech Online, for which links are in the description below. Have a fantastic day.